ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today we're talking about Intel's 10 nanometer CPUs, and sort of an update and talk about what's happening with Intel on the CPU front. But before we jump into that, I just have to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, ekoffers.com. So this is a great website. Maybe you need to grab a Windows key or something like that. Maybe you just did a new build. Grab one of those really cheap. Maybe you need Office. You can go grab that at the same time. Really good website to use. Links are in the description down below. Check it out. So if you do not know, Intel have been saying that they're going to be bringing 10 nanometer CPUs for a long time now. And boy, have they made us wait. There's been delay after delay after delay. And it just goes on and on and on. So I thought today I would try to read around as much as I could, gather as much information as I could, so that I could present it to you, and basically we could talk about it. So currently, right now, Intel's CPUs, their mainstream CPUs, are the 9000 series. So I have the 9900K in my rig. Uh, that's the top CPU in the mainstream lineup. So these are Coffee Lake CPUs, so the 8000 series and the 9000 series are both Coffee Lake CPUs. The main difference being is that there's just changes in clock speeds and changes in core count uh, on the 9900K, the top one, that going up to uh, eight cores, so eight cores for the 9900K, 16 threads, and it being a five gigahertz CPU, so clock speeds got turned up. That being said, the 8700K was a six core CPU that also had high clock speeds. And they're all 14 nanometer, and Intel's been stuck on this for quite a while now. So with Ryzen 3000, or Zen 2, lurking just a few months away, one was actually just spotted the other day as well. So it's really getting close. I mean, Computex isn't that far away either. Intel's looking to be in a bit of trouble as these 7 nanometer Zen 2 CPUs are supposedly going to be very, very powerful. And a lot of people are really, really hyped up surrounding them. I mean, these things have some serious rumored specs, that's for sure. So what will Intel be bringing out to counter Zen 2 or Ryzen 3000? Now, this is where it gets confusing because you may have heard all these different code names that have been thrown around out there like Cannon Lake, Comet Lake, Ice Lake, and Sunny Cove, and all these other things. And honestly, it confused me as well. You know, it's good that AMD, it's just simply had Zen, you know, Ryzen the 1000 series, then you had Zen Plus, Ryzen 2000, and then you're having Zen 2, which is Ryzen 3000. All very straightforward, you know, nice and easy. Although, to be fair, AMD's older CPUs, it was a little bit more difficult to follow, but it was still more or less pretty straightforward. With these Intel CPUs, it's kind of been all over the place, and I think that's because of Intel's big delays with 10 nanometers. It's kind of thrown everything uh, into a big jumble for them. So it's been difficult. So it looks like as far as 10 nanometer goes, it's going to be delayed even further. And Intel in the meantime are going to be releasing 14 nanometer Comet Lake CPUs. And these will be coming out this year. This is we're talking about desktop CPUs that is. So the Comet Lake CPUs are going to be like, I don't know, 14 nanometer plus or something like that I don't know something ridiculous <laughs> and these are just going to be the stopgap CPUs until Ice Lake which is going to be their 10 nanometer CPUs come out so what's Comet Lake going to bring basically it's just going to be the same as what we have with Coffee Lake right now, the 9000 series, except they're probably going to go up two extra cores on the top. So the top CPU will probably be a 10 core. I'd imagine it will come with pretty high clock speeds as well, probably use quite a bit of power, and uh, it's probably going to be expensive too. I think as far as Intel goes right now, they know they're kind of beaten in terms of value for money. Like there's nothing in their current lineup that I would call good value for money, honestly. Um, nothing really comes to mind like a few years ago oh not even a few i should say like when the 8400 came out uh compared to the ryzen cpus at the time like the 1600 uh and the 1600x the 8400 i thought was pretty good value but but now considering the pricing of the 2600 and 2600x 2600x especially if you, you know get on special or something like that they're just not particularly good value 
However, they, they are holding the sort of performance crown, that is, and that's due to their very good single-threaded performance and the very high clock speeds, especially out of things like the 9900K here, you know, 5 gigahertz out of the box. Um, everyone will tell you that the best gaming CPU you can get right now is the 9900K. It just is. But it's certainly not good value for money. It's very, very expensive. So it's just for those enthusiasts or people that aren't bothered by value. Uh, that just want that power there and they don't they don't really care how much it costs So it's going to be a 10 core 14 nanometer CPU launching in 2019 like the 6950x Three years ago, which was a 10 core CPU granted. It was an HEDT CPU uh, on 14 nanometers that launched three years ago so yeah, if you're disappointed if I can even call it that uh, then you're not gonna be the only one because certainly I am as well it's gonna be quite interesting for the fact that it must be really pushing the Skylake microarchitecture to the absolute limits considering that it launched you know, Skylake launched back in 2015 you know the this this 10 core this 14 nanometer plus 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 whatever 10 core part must just be pushing it so hard I mean, it is, as I said, it will be powerful. But like I said, it's like the 9900K is powerful, but then it's not going to be good value. And that's really what Intel's only got going for them right now, these extremely powerful CPUs. But they're going to be expensive. And that's kind of what's killing them right now, is they just can't deliver on the value compared to AMD. And it's going to continue to keep hurting them, I think, until these 10 nanometer CPUs come out. So speaking of which, you may have heard people say that Isolate, the 10 nanometer CPUs, will be coming out in 2019. I said that as well. And it is true. Intel have said that they will be launching in Q4 of this year. But from what it looks like, that's only going to be the mobile CPUs. So that's for the laptops. It's not going to be for the desktops. It's looking like they'll be coming out in sort of like Q2 2020. So maybe Computex time or something like that next year. And that's a bit of a letdown for a lot of reasons. I mean, Ice Lake's going to feature the Sunny Cove cores and Gen 11 graphics, and it should be a huge step up for Intel in terms of performance and efficiency and value, hopefully. But aside from that, it's still too far away. And if we think that AMD is going to be launching Ryzen 3000 in a few months' time, 7 nanometer CPUs with some pretty crazy rumored specs, even if the rumors are overhyped and the, the CPUs aren't quite as good as they're rumored to be, it's still going to be a big step forward for AMD. And I just don't know how Intel is going to compete. The Comet Lake CPUs, these 14 nanometer ones, I mean, even if it's a 10 core, I just don't see how it's going to compete uh, with Zen 2. I really, really don't. They really need Ice Lake. That's what needs to happen. They need to get down to 10 nanometer and then they can be off to the races. And they'll really start to you know, compete with AMD then. But until they get there, I don't really know what's going to happen. So that's basically it. There's not a huge amount of information surrounding Ice Lake right now. Um, obviously, we'll know more as the year progresses. Maybe we'll hear more at Computex as well. But that's kind of the state of the game. So it seems like Intel are in a lot of trouble. And they're just holding on to the sort of en enthusiast crowd right now you know, uh, just barely holding on with things like the 9900K and other ones for those people that just want the ultimate gaming CPU. But with Zen 2, they might also lose that crown. And then they're going to be in some serious trouble. And AMD's market share in the CPU market will just grow exponentially if that's the case. Because why would anyone buy the Intel CPU when they could get, you know, a Ryzen 3000 CPU? Uh, that's just going to be much, much more powerful. Years ago, I never, ever thought this could be the case. Like, you guys that have been in a tech for a while, um, I mean, just think back to, like, the bulldozer or pile driver days. Could you ever imagine a time in which the AMD CPUs would have this much of an advantage over the Intel CPUs? Could you ever imagine it? Like, I certainly couldn't back then. And yet, here we are. <laughs> and... That's the reality of it. It's it's just mind-blowing to me. Anyways, as always, guys, I want to know what you think in the uh, comment sections down below. Let me know 
what do you think about Intel's 10 nanometer stuff? What do you think about Comet Lake and Ice Lake and how do you think they're going to be? Maybe you've read things that I haven't read. Let me know in the comment section down below if you can add anything to the conversation. I like talking to you guys, replying to the comments, reading them and that. So definitely let me know in that comment section down below. As always, if you haven't subscribed to Tech Showdown already, I suggest you do because I've got more great content coming right up. And with Computex around the corner as well, I'll be doing lots of content there. Uh, now that I'm based here in Taipei, it makes it very easy for me. So I imagine I'll be able to create some very, very good content for Computex because I am here. I've got my main rig here and everything. Uh, so I'll be looking forward to that and bringing you guys some awesome Computex content, especially around AMD CPUs, that's for sure. <laughs> I thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you all next time.